talk about a project that I did in collaboration with computer engineer uh, Eric Brunvand, who couldn't be here today. But this is an interactive installation that explores cooperative experience, both literally and conceptually, while referencing our potential ability to solve environmental issues, specifically clean water, through collaboration. Eric is an associate professor at the University of Utah in computer science, where his teaching and research interests include uh, graphics processors, designing application-specific computers, VLSI integrated circuit design, and asynchronous systems. I'm an assistant professor in sculpture and media where my interests include the space in between disciplines, where sculpture crosses with film, theater, dance, architecture, and engineering, with a specific e emphasis on environmental <laughs> issues both as a, a symbolic and as a restorative art practice. Eric and I both have a mutual interest in arts tech collaboration, and we'd been talking about working together for some time. It was the anniversary of Nine Evenings last year that became the catalyst for this particular project that we did. Not only were we interested in collaborating with each other, we also wanted to encourage collaboration amongst others. And at the same time, we were engaged in an ongoing conversation about the significance of water in the West. The cooperative element of our piece requires, uh, it's a circuit that requires the viewers to form a human chain between two interaction points which consists of bronze casts of each of our hands. In that mode, they're encouraged to collaborate more and connect with others, enlarging the chain by holding hands and cooperating. As they engage in this, the audio sounds of water move from a garbled, unrecognizable sound to a babbling, kind of recognizable sound of water. And there's video fragments on the screen that move from a dark, contaminated water to a clean, flowing water, and the components come together to create a comprehensible picture. The larger the human chain, the more cohesive the sounds and the visuals are. At the same time, there's still fragmentation and overlap, and this comments on the difficulty and imperfection of ecological restoration as a practice. In order to get the reaction that we wanted, we use very simple servo, pan tilt servo motors and sensing. We use bronze casts of our hands because we wanted to encourage the viewers to collaborate without having to have needed detailed instructions. And at the same time, we found we could force people to collaborate by placing them too far apart for one person to reach on their own. We were interested in a very simple circuit that could detect not only that a human had connected two things, but that a chain of human had, humans were connecting things, and to detect how many people were cooperating. To do this, Eric used a very humble Arduino and processing because of their compatibility. The Arduino is great at electrical sensing, and it communicates very well with processing through a serial communication which allows processing to determine what percentage of the audio and video to blend together based on the movement that's being sensed. This project was uh, generously funded by the University of Utah's Faculty Research and Creative Grant Program. Um, and at the same time, we received additional funds from the College of Fine Arts to create an exhibition that included teams of artists from the art department and engineers from computer science to create new media artworks based on our theme, The Significance of Water in the West. Some of those pieces included interactive works and code-based works, and some of them were more video-based and audio-based uh, artworks. It is when we come together that we can increase our knowledge, our efforts, and our experience to solve our problems. The climate crisis is seen as the greatest obstacle facing mankind today. And it will be our human connection with our surroundings and our each, uh, each other that will allow us to find solutions to tackle these problems. And I'd like to end with a quote by art critic Lucy Lepard. Of course, art cannot change the world alone, but it is a worthy ally to those who are questioning power with unconventional solutions. Thank you.